Oh, um, yeah. Hi, I'm Rapid Navi, and I don't fear the Reaper. Yeah, I used that one twice. Now, it's time for me to pick a l take a look at Reapers in fiction. Let's do this thing. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Yeah. I have a book. It's called Reaper. You can get it on Amazon. I'm not going to do any Reapers from my own book. Well, any of the, their version. But yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to do any uh, characters from my book because, yes, I am biased. I am a shameless self-promoter, but I'm not so much as going to pick characters from my own book. Yeah, I'm, I'm not that guy. All right. So, yeah, if you haven't read the book, that's fine. Um, we're not going to be doing picks from there. Uh, honestly, my favorite one from the series has not even appeared yet, so. Yeah. Anyway, now I'm going to open up my definition of Reapers here. I will take on anyone that is called a Reaper in series, is a death god, or even death themselves. My rulings will be based in if they have to, uh, they're caretakers for souls in some manner. I will also allow only one death figure from universe. So I will pick my favorite from that universe. So, if there's like two competing on the list, I'm going to pick which one is my favorite. So, if you like one character it, from this universe and I do another one from that universe, it's not you're not going to see both. You're only going to see one from that universe. Okay? Alright. Also, remember these are my favorites. These are my opinion-based choices. If you like the Grim Reaper, you like the version of Death, and they didn't show up on this list, it's not that they're bad. It's just probably either I like somebody else more, because I am narrowing this down to my top four again, or I just, or more likely, honestly, I haven't read or seen anything they're in. So, yeah. You know, there's only so much culture anyone can suck up in a lifetime, so, so you gotta draw somewhere. Okay. So, yeah, I guess that's it. So, okay, again with my top four, and let's start. At number four, La Muerte, a character from Jorge Gutierrez's Book of Life. She is voiced by Kate Del Castillo. She is clearly influenced by La Santa Muerte and La Catrina. She's the caretaker of the land of the remembered. That is the land where the dead go as long as they are remembered. She's married and then divorced and then married again to Sabalba. And a lot of fun of her character is her back and forth with him. She's a free agent and she makes her own decisions. And she's just a very nice person. Though when she finds out her ex cheated at a bet they had, she becomes very furious and someone you do not want to cross. Honestly, one thing to take from this film is how intricate her design is. Just look at her. Look at how intricate her design is. She has actual flickering candles on her hat. Her hair moves. And look at all those little details. It must have taken them a long time to animate everything. And that's like really impressive. And her, her character is really fun. There is also one scene at the very end that puts her over the top in my book. But it's kind of a spoiler so I'm not going to reveal it here. I would suggest that you go check out the Book of Life. It might become your next Halloween treat. At number 3, Death from Supernatural. Oh, Death. Oh, Death. No money, no wealth, no jewels, no gold can satisfy me but your soul. The Pale Rider, Death. In the supernatural universe, Death is way beyond it. He sees Earth and even Lucifer as beneath him. The way he carries himself really showcases that. I mean, he doesn't hate humanity, he just doesn't feel like he needs to get involved in this crisis or any other. Though he does seem to help a tiny bit, if just for the snacks, Julian Ritchie does a spectacular job with him. Death easily comes across powerful, a bit bored, and, and not truly good or evil. Just death. Just this thing that you shouldn't mess with and very inhuman at times. Though he does seem to have a bit of a sense of humor, his license plate reads, Buh bye and considers reaping Sam kind of an honor. Plus his first scene can send chills down your bone. He really does a fine job being this universe's death, even though people don't seem to stay dead too long in this series. At number 2, Death of the Endless, or as some people know her, Dee Dee. 
She is the creation of Neil Gaiman for DC Comics Vertigo line. She's deaf. According to Gaiman, the top deaf. Everyone else is an aspect of her or has ties to her. And this is a universe with Reapers, Black Racers, Necrons, and all sorts of deaths. So that is saying something. Most describe her as a perky goth wearing a silver anna, the Egyptian symbol of life. She was at the start of the universe and will be the one to close everything up at the end of time. Though in her early days at the dawn of the universe she was mean and something to truly be afraid of, but now she's much kinder. She has this ability, sort of death takes a holiday thing. She becomes mortal for one day once every hundred years just to see what it's like. In high cost of living, she does just that. For one day, she learns what it's like to be a mortal human, to see what life's about, and to get a better perspective of it, to understand what it means to be alive. Honestly, Dee Dee seems to represent death as a mercy, as a kindness. Her kind nature just showcases how something like that at the very end can make the transition so much easier. And it's really highlighted because so many people remember this version of death from the comics. And I'm not the only one who seems to think this is a memorable death, as many people recall this version of death and still carry her as the main version of death in the DC universe overall. At number one, Death the Kid. Bang bang, have a nice dream. Number one is Death the Kid from Soul Eater by Atsushi Okubu, though I'm sure he would love the number eight spot. Kid is the son of the Grim Reaper and the one to take his place and lead the world in the next age. He's a meister with his partners Liz and Patty Thompson who transform into twin pistols. Together they fight Keishin, witches and other monsters bringing terror to their world. Now why do I love Kid? He's funny and kind of a huge dork so it's pretty easy for me to relate to him. And on a personal level I've had some issues with OCD and his over the top compulsions kinda let me laugh at it a little bit and it makes it seem less bad for me. He is obsessed with symmetry and though I take it more as a desire for balance. He accepts that there will always be evil in the world and only seeks to balance that out with the good. Spoiler warning, like major spoiler warning. At the end of the manga series, he does become the Grim Reaper and instead of continuing the age long war between Meisters and Witches, he decides to befriend them to make an alliance. I like that, make friends not enemies. And he is very dedicated to protecting the souls, preventing madness from corrupting other souls and overall protecting them. And on one more note, I can't say no to Kid since uh, he is one of my earliest cosplays and I kinda love that I get to dress up as him. It's a biased analysis I'll admit, but this whole thing is opinion based anyway so yeah, I love me some Death the Kid. Okay, so that's my pick for the my favorite Reapers in fiction. What did you think? Did you agree? Did you disagree? Like and share this video and comment below. Let me know what you thought. Get the ideas spread out there. This is a discussion topic. We're talking about Halloween. Death does come up a bit. Anyway, like I was saying, be sure to subscribe because this month, being the horror centric, I will. I'm gonna talk about a lot of super supernatural elements. So you know gonna be doing a lot of stuff i hate for you guys to miss out so be sure to subscribe follow me on twitter as storyteller navi and the links are below again thanks for watching and i gotta figure out where to put this thing so wish me luck